Where did all my money go? A moment of silence for my wallet. But we're gonna test these Brooks Glycerin Maxes out. So first impressions of the shoe, obviously, or maybe not obviously, these look to be competing with the ASIC Super Blast 2s as well as the New Balance Baloses. They are all $200 premium, ultra premium, super stack shoes with racing foam or a premium foam and also no plate. So the Brooks Glycerin Max is no different. Brooks used their new foam, DNA Tune Foam, which I'm really excited to try on. Um, and the upper looks like a regular kind of Brooks upper. It's very cushioned and very padded. I do wanna note that just off of initial feel of the shoe, like holding the shoe, it does feel a touch heavier than the ASIC Super Blast 2. But then again, the ASIC Super Blast 2, I think is a unicorn. I've never felt a shoe that was like, I guess that light for how big of a stack it had. So yeah, excited to throw these on feet for you guys. And I will give you guys my first impressions of the shoe after my little 5K. Wow, so first impressions throwing these shoes on are that they do run true to size in my opinion. I do have wider feet than the average person I would say. And my forefoot has plenty of space, plenty of space for those pinky toes and bunions if you have any. I mean, obviously it's a very high stack shoe. So initial try on, it just feels very cushioned and very comfortable from just a walking perspective. Obviously I'm gonna go for a quick run and then I'll let you guys know how they perform uh, just from a first run perspective. But something I also wanna note about this shoe initial on the initial try on is that the rocker is really aggressive. So. It's kind of an interesting feel. It feels definitely softer than the Super Blast 2, and I'm gonna compare the shoe, two shoes against each other once I get more miles on these. But just from an initial try on, the rocker is just crazy in these. Like I feel like I can't even stand up straight. Like I'm I'm gonna roll over and roll forward. So um, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is, is kind of up to you. But um, for such a max cushion shoe and something so soft, um, you would think that this is made for, you know, maybe recovery days. But with that rocker paired with the really soft foam, it kind of makes me want to want to go run. So, I mean, I'm going to go on my first run. Again, these run true to size. Upper is very comfortable. The tongue is not gusseted, which is something to know, I guess, if you like gusseted tongues. But overall, they feel like they run true to size. Like my toe is where it needs to be in my size 12. Um, on foot, they don't feel super heavy. They kind of remind me of the New Balance More V5s. Maybe not as snug as the More V5s, but it kind of has that same upper feel. Um, the More V5s upper is goaded, but that's just my opinion. So yeah, I'm gonna quickly take these out for a little 5K run, see how they perform, um, and give you guys my first impressions on the Glycerin Maxes. So I will see you guys in a sec. Woo! All right, just got back from the 5K, first run in the Brooks Glycerin Max, and I make a couple shorts here and there, I dabble in it. And some of the comments I get are, damn, how come you don't sweat? You must be faking your runs. But the reason for that was because A, I was running slower, and B, I used to live in San Francisco or I was running in San Francisco and it was like, you know, 60 to 70 degrees. So it was really cold, really windy. I would never really have to sweat because it was so prime for weather or it was so prime for running conditions. But now I'm back home in the East Bay area. So it is a lot hotter, especially now, like in October, September, around that time frame, it gets really hot where I live. So I just got done running the 5K in about 90-ish plus degree weather. And I know, I know, you know, there's hotter places in the US or hotter places in the world, more humidity, blah, blah, blah. But listen, I was born in California. <laughs> I am spoiled with good weather. so. When it's around 90-ish to 100 degrees, like I get really hot, especially while I'm running. And, um, you know, I had to get the work in. But as you can see, I'm glistening. Your boy's glistening. So did not fake my run. I don't fake my runs. Um, so shout out to all those people that commented on my shorts. Look, I'm sweating. Um, really freaking hot. As you can tell, I'm a little bit out of breath. But how I ran in the Brooks Glycerin Maxes, uh, the quick 5K for the first impressions, I wanted to get a good grasp as to how the shoe kind of performed in different 
paces, um, even if it's just a first initial run so that you guys could have the information more readily available quicker um, before I put more miles on this and give a full review. Um, but overall, um, I how I broke down the 5K was the first mile I ran at my zone two pace, which is around 10 minutes per mile. I think it was like 10, 15. Um, start out slow. I don't stretch, so that's kind of how I get my body warm. Um, but you know, in this type of weather, um, I don't really have to warm up as much too because my body's already warm from the heat um so i ran 10 14 pace the first mile shoe felt phenomenal um the comfort definitely there obviously it's such a high stack shoe with that dna tuned cushioning and initially i felt like it was very similar to the new balance more v5 um, which is actually one of my favorite shoes of 2024 i don't know exactly if that's going to be my shoe of the year just because you know there's a lot of shoes still coming out um, but initially yeah i was very impressed very comfortable um, very soft and plush and i felt like i wasn't expending any energy while i was running in these at least for the first mile at a 10 14 pace so my zone two pace so on slow runs first impressions th these are going to be beasts i mean um the New Balance More V5 does come in at $45 cheaper than the shoe, but then again, we're going to test them in faster conditions. So the second mile, I actually picked it up in the Brooks Glycerin Max, and I ran around a nine-minute pace, which was uh, my or which is my marathon pace or my goal pace, which is sub nine. Um, I'm hovering around like you know 8:45 to nine minutes per mile for me. That's the pace that I feel like I can hold for a full marathon. And at that pace, the shoe started to, I guess not firm up is the correct word, but I started to feel a little bit of that quote unquote magic from the DNA tuned midsole. It's not as bouncy as what I've experienced in Saucony's running shoes like Power Run PB. Uh, I don't think I've tried anything with their HG foam, which is I think their next tier up. Um, in racing foams, but the power Saucony's Power Run PB is probably the bounciest foam I've personally ever ran in, and it's kind of my S tier or top of the line bouncy foam um, if I want something really responsive and really impact absorbent. But DNA tuned is more subtle, and the foam, even though there is a lot of it, didn't feel like it was slowing me down at all. It is kind of a chunky or clunky shoe, at least when you pick it up initially. Like, look at this thick boy. It is pretty thick, if I do say so myself, uh, respectfully. And um, yeah, as you guys can tell, I'm a little delusional from that run, <laughs> but um, I definitely need to hydrate. I did feel that for marathon pace, it did hold up very well, nine minutes per mile. Um, damn, I'm kind of yapping right now, but um, around this area, you know, like, I mean, marathon pace is nothing too crazy. Uh, I wasn't running a marathon. I was only running a 5K. So that my nine minute per mile pace felt really easy. I mean, it was only the second mile of the run too. So uh, the shoe performed very well. I did feel that not the responsiveness picked up, but I did start to feel that the foam was performing a little bit differently. Instead of that super plush feel underfoot, it started to get a little bit more ground feel, which kind of excited me. That's what I felt in the ASIC Super Blast 2. And it is a good sign when these super high stack shoes are getting a little bit, I guess they feel closer to the ground because you don't feel like you're being slowed down by the shoe, even though there's so much foam. So you're still getting all the properties of impact absorption um, for your joints and your hips and knees and whatnot, um, while still maintaining that specific pace. So at a nine minute per mile or my marathon pace, the shoe performed very well. And at the last mile, that is where I guess I'm still out of breath from uh, I actually tried to run kind of like an eight minute per mile pace, but then I was kind of like in the mindset of F it, like I'm going to try to book it. Um, and I actually ran a sub seven minute mile on the last mile, uh, which was a round of 654, I believe, uh, split in the Brooks Glycerin Max. And I really wanted to test the shoe in a faster running condition because when I was running miles one and two, I felt like, okay, like this is a good, you know, overall pretty good shoe, pretty comfortable, feels like the New Balance More V5, but you know, at $45 increase, let's see how it performs when you really pick up the pace. So I would say sub seven minute per mile, it's not official or anything, but I think that's around my 5K pace. Um, I think I can run a full 5K at, you know, maybe sub seven. Maybe that's a little bit fast, but um, overall, that's where I felt the shoe started to really compress and really the DNA tuned flash, or not DNA tuned flash, uh, the DNA tuned midsole really started to kind of cater to the pace that I was going. Um, and I actually didn't feel like I was running in heels or like I felt 
super high off the ground or anything. When I started to run really fast, um, which was sub seven minute per mile pace for me, um, the DNA tune really adapted to my pace and it actually allowed me to kind of run that fast uh, while still feeling protected. So as a bigger runner, you know, as you guys maybe know, like my loyal viewer, shout out to you guys. Um, I, am, I am 195 pounds. I'm trying to lose more weight, honestly, but I am a bigger runner or on the bigger side of runners. And I felt that in this shoe, even at a sub seven minute per mile pace, it felt very comfortable yet also like it didn't slow me down. I felt like the reason I couldn't go faster in the shoe was because of my own fitness. It wasn't because I felt that I was gonna injure myself. So kudos to the Brooks Glycerin Max, at least from a first impression standpoint, at three different paces, I felt that it could handle all three different paces. And I mean, for $200, like I do expect a shoe to be able to do everything like the Asics Super Blast 2. Super excited to get more miles on these and then compare them to the Super Blast 2 because I think that these two are obviously competing. I don't know if I'm gonna get my hands on the New Balance Balos just because that's another $200, that's quite a bit, um, but we'll see. I mean, I'm not gonna say never, but overall, um, the, sorry, I was talking about the midsole the whole, like, the whole entire time. At the sub seven minute per mile pace when I was running a little bit faster, I did have to make some quick corner cuts um, and some turns, and I felt that that really tested the outsole for a traction point of view. Again, it was really hot. Um, the rubber was probably a little bit sticky because it is a softer rubber, and you know, I was running so fast that you know, I felt, I started smelling the rubber a little bit, um, and I felt that it stuck to the ground really well and it kept my feet planted while I was turning. There was a couple turns, I would say like two turns where I did feel a little bit of instability, but then again, I was running pretty fast and I was making a pretty sharp turn. Um, and I think that's just due to the high stack height. Like I felt like I almost twisted my ankle or I felt like, oh man, like that's not normal, you know, um, in the shoe. So, I mean, I don't think that's gonna be a very common thing if you're gonna run super fast. I don't think you're gonna be juking out there like you're playing football or you're gonna be playing basketball in these. So um, when you're running, you know, regular turns or regular paces, um, you're gonna be fine for from a traction point of view, at least in dry weather conditions. This rubber on the outsole of the Brooks Glycerin Max is definitely softer on the softer side. So I think that it's gonna perform well in dry weather conditions from a traction point of view, especially if you're just running on the road. With that being said, I don't know how the durability is gonna hold up because I do think that this rubber is thinner than the Super Blast 2's rubber. And since it's softer than the ASIC Super Blast 2's rubber, um, I don't know how the durability is gonna hold up. So that is for another day. And then as for the midsole, again, it performed really well at all three paces. I am a heavier runner and I felt that this was a very comfortable shoe. Um, it provided a lot of impact protection without feeling too bulky. Um, obviously it is a bigger shoe. Um, as for the weight, talking about the, the structure of the shoe, I think the weight didn't really feel like a big deal to me. It did feel heavier than the ASIC Super Blast 2, but then again, only running a 5K, at least for me, I don't really notice the weight of shoes. So uh, the weight wasn't a huge issue for me. It runs true to size, a very padded upper, and it kind of reminds me of like, you know, the traditional Brooks upper, like kind of like the Brooks Ghost Max 2's upper or the regular Brooks Ghost or the Brooks Glycerin. Honestly, if I did have a gripe just from a first impressions point of view, it would be, I wish they gave a more premium premium upper for the price point of $200. I mean, that's very expensive, especially for a daily trainer. I know, you know, there's a lot of technology in this shoe, but I wish they would have given us the Brooks Hyperion Max 2's upper. That would be super nice. Um, because I think that that upper is just a little bit more breathable. It's not as thick as this upper is. So maybe it's this upper is gonna be more durable than the Brooks Hyperion Max 2s, but I haven't had a problem with my pair so far. Um, I just felt that in this heat too, like my feet did get really, really hot. Like I said, I was joking about here, like smelling the rubber burn on these shoes, but I, I don't think I was actually like capping that much because I did smell a little bit of like, I guess like rubber. Um, and I think my feet just got super, super hot in these shoes not to say that you know there's zero ventilation but i think there could have definitely been a lot more ventilation in this shoe and then i just honestly wish that the upper felt more premium it is a very good upper so far runs true to size the heel lockdown was really good and i did have ample toe room uh, i did, did think that this shoe ran true to size 
the heel lockdown was perfect. Didn't have any problems with it. Um, but yeah, I just felt that my, sh my foot got a little bit too hot in the shoe. And I just wish that it felt a little bit more premium on my foot. Um, but that's going to wrap up my first impressions video. Holy moly. I was yapping for a while. I did not mean for this first impressions to be like 15 to 20 minutes long, but here we are. Um, let me know if you guys like this style of review. Um, let me know if you guys like me delirious talking to the camera. Um, but I initially really enjoyed the Brooks Glycer and Max and you know, for $200, I, I would hope so. So uh, I'm going to keep putting miles in this shoe and I will let you guys know when I'm ready to do a full review. And then I am going to compare this shoe to this a6 Super Blast 2. I think that's going to be an awesome video. I'm personally really excited to kind of see which shoe I like better personally because, you know, at the price point of $200, it's getting ridiculous a little bit. So I'm going to see who's the winner of the Super Shoes. And then, yeah, I know New Balance Balos is out, but I don't know if I'm going to get that one because um, I don't know. I've also seen other reviews saying that it's nothing crazy. And I am planning on testing the New Balance 1080 V14 um, just because I've never had one of those shoes in that line before. So I kind of want to prioritize that over the Balos. Um, but yeah, that's going to pretty much wrap up my first impressions on the Brooks Glycer and Max. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys watched all the way, I appreciate you. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for the full review. Catch you in the next one.